Hi everybody, today I'm going to answer some commonly asked questions um, about fasting, intermittent fasting, and the ketogenic diet. So one of the questions that I often get asked is, um, do you need to eat high fat diet to get into ketosis? And so the short answer is no, you don't need to eat a lot of fat to get into ketosis. So getting into ketosis is about keeping carbohydrates really low in your diet. So I recommend when you're starting out to only get 20 grams of net carbohydrates. So a net carbohydrate is your total carbohydrates subtract the fiber from that. So for vegetables um, and fruits that have fiber, not that you're eating a lot of fruit, but mostly vegetables, you can subtract the fiber from the total amount to get the net grams of carbs. So if you're sticking around 20 grams of carbs, you should easily get into ketosis and um, it really isn't dependent on how much fat that you're eating. So fat in the diet is another question I commonly get asked, like how much fat do you need? And I say you don't need to go out of your way to consume fat if you have fat to lose. So if you're a thin person, you can get away with eating more fat. You can add butter to your to your meals, to your vegetables. You can have lots of fatty meat like bacon and ribs and fatty steaks. Um, you can have medium ground beef and not worry about it if you're relatively thin. But if you're doing the ketogenic diet for weight loss, there's really no need to add additional fat. You're just gonna get the fat, the natural fat that you will find in meats and avocados and uh, things like that. But you don't need to be going out of your way to add like say butter to your coffee to make a keto coffee. You don't need to go out of your way to do that bulletproof coffee thing. Um, and add lots of fat like you can enjoy fat fat is there to make you feel satiated and enjoy the diet but you don't need to go to your way to add it is all I'm saying um, yeah so to get into ketosis you're just keeping the carbohydrates low you don't really need to worry about upping the fats uh, that'll just uh, ketosis will happen just by lowering your carbohydrates um, and then I often get asked about protein so I find that most people under eat protein, they're not eating enough. So if you're not adding a lot of fat and you're lowering your carbohydrates, then most of your diet is gonna be coming from protein. You don't need to worry about protein turning into sugar. So yes, our body can convert protein into sugar, but it'll only do that if it's needed. So if you have been fasting for days on end, and your body is depleted in glucose, you've used up all your glycogen stores, you're exercising, working out, you have no glycogen, which is glucose in your muscle, then your body is going to start converting protein into sugar. But normally, like if we eat a huge protein meal, protein will, you know, raise your sugar a little bit and it'll, but it's a more prolonged, stable, um, raise in your blood glucose rather than carbohydrates where you would get a big spike in your glucose. So glu uh, protein is a nice even raise in your glucose levels. Um, but yeah, your body isn't going to use that protein to turn it into sugar unless it needs the sugar in, in the body. So you don't need to worry about overeating protein and most people aren't eating enough protein. So don't worry about that. Um, some people do find they need to eat moderate amounts of protein um, in order to lose weight and not too high. Um, but for myself, I can eat a pretty much a higher protein diet. I do do well on a higher protein and a bit less fat um, if I want to lose weight. All right, so hopefully that clears that up. Um, you do need at least 20 to 30 grams of protein at each meal. You want to you want to eat that to stimulate protein synthesis and maintain lean muscle, especially if you're exercising, like doing bodybuilding, and you want to gain some lean muscle. You got to make sure you're getting that 20 to 30 grams of protein to stimulate that protein synthesis. Um, weightlifting also triggers protein synthesis. 
And uh, so I will do weightlifting while I'm fasted, just if I'm fasting for the day, because I'm not gonna stimulate protein synthesis through my meals, so I'm gonna stimulate that through working out. All right, so people always ask about fasting. They're like, isn't fasting just starving yourself? Uh, the difference between fasting and starving is fasting is you know that you're going to eat again. You're just um, you're just limiting uh, your food and your food intake, and um, for a limited time, you know that you're going to eat again. Whereas starving is depriving the body from nutrients. So fasting, we're not depriving our body; we're just delaying that. There's um, Jen Stevens has wrote a great book called "Delay, Don't Deny." So we're just delaying ourselves and then we're not denying ourselves. So fasting is great because you don't have to count calories. You can uh, eat what you want in that time period, your um, time restricted feeding window. You can pretty much have what you want. There's even people that have um, eaten like junk food meals and still lost weight. Now I don't recommend that. Your body needs nutrition. Uh, the whole point of health, and that's what I'm about, is finding a way to maintain your weight and eat and be healthy. Your body needs that uh, those nutrients, so I don't recommend doing junk food. But if you do want to splurge and have, you know, some chips and ice cream or whatever your favorite treat is, intermittent fasting can still allow you to do that. Now I follow the ketogenic diet, and I also fast. Um, I find the ketogenic diet works well for me and it's very nutritious. I eat lots of, you know, um, fatty cuts of meat and sometimes low glycemic vegetables. Uh, I do mostly a carnivore diet at the moment, but I feel like the carnivore diet is something that helps you to reset um, and fix your digestion issues and figure out what food intolerances you have, which is what I'm doing right now. So I'm pretty sure that dairy and eggs are causing me some digestive issues. So I'm doing the carnivore diet to cut those out at the moment. Um, and it's really good for that, for helping to figure out what is going on. Because once you abstain for certain items for like 30 days and then you add them back in, it's easier to see those symptoms that you've been having and um, to figure out. And you can keep a food diary that's very helpful too with different symptoms, like if you're having bloating, for instance, or constipation, diarrhea, any kind of digestive issues. Maybe you're having rashes or eczema or psoriasis. Maybe you're having um, arthritis symptoms. Uh, people now don't think about aches and pains being related to something in their diet, but it often is, and I found that was the case for me. Um, so yeah, so fasting isn't starving. That was the question that I was answering. Fasting is a, a chosen period of time to restrain yourself from eating. And right now when we're all at home in quarantine, it's pretty easy to graze throughout the day, right? If you don't have in your mind uh, that set time period that you're going to eat. So fasting can be really helpful right now or a time restricted window where you're going to eat. So perhaps you're just gonna choose to eat between nine and five and avoid that nighttime snacking. If you're having trouble um, avoiding that nighttime snacking, then perhaps you want to skip breakfast and you have an eating window that's more like 12 to eight. Um, that might work for some people right now. Uh, another question that I often get is, should I always be in ketosis? So if you're starting the ketogenic diet, you're new to the keto diet, I would say yes, you always want to be in ketosis when you're just starting out. So you really want to limit your carbohydrates every single day to 20 grams per day for at least 30 to 90 days. So it takes a good 30 days, I'd say at least, to get fat adapted, your body get used to it. So you don't wanna really start introducing carbohydrates and popping out of ketosis until you've been doing this diet for a while. So I'm gonna say 30 to 90 days, you want to be fat adapted before um, coming out of ketosis. Now, I think it's fine to um, cycle in and out of ketosis. I think our ancestors, um, you know, pre-agriculture would have come in and out of ketosis. They're probably in ketosis a lot of the time because 
um, food would have been, you know, not as plentiful as it is now. So they would have hunted and feasted and then they would have had periods of fasting where they didn't have, you know, food, um, plentiful food. Um, and then there would be times probably in the warm months where they had access to berries and honey and things like that, where they would come out of ketosis just from, from eating more plant matter. So I do think we probably cycled in and out and I think that's probably best for our bodies is that you don't need to be in ketosis all the time, but it is good if you can get your body fat adapted. So you can get fat adapted through the ketogenic diet, but you can also do it through exercise and through fasting. So if you're exercising a lot and depleting your glycogen stores and you're getting your body used to um, burning fat for fuel as well. So you don't necessarily have to do the ketogenic diet to get into ketosis and you don't have to fast either. Um, a lot of athletes that are exercising heavy and eating carbohydrates can still get into ketosis through exercise. Um, yeah, and depleting their glycogen stores. So that's my answer to that. And um, the last question that I'm going to address is how long should I fast to see benefits? So I would say most people start seeing benefits from fasting 16 hours a day. So start slow. If, you're, if you've never fasted before, try 12 hours. So stopping eating at 9 and don't start eating till 9 the next day. That would be an example of 12-hour fast. And then move yourself slowly up to 13, then 14, then 15, and 16. So at 16 hours, most people will start seeing some benefits of autophagy. And that's your body's recycling program where you're cleaning up cells and uh, getting rid of some old proteins and old cells that are damaged. Your body will rejuvenate itself, basically. And that helps with the immune system and everything. So 16 hours is what I would typically recommend. Check out my other videos uh, for more information on fasting or check out my blog at lowcarbgramma at blogspot.com for a bunch of articles about that. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at lowcarbgramma at gmail.com um, or check me out on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks, guys. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.